everyone, it is July 1st, 2022 here in the United States. We're getting ready to celebrate our independence on July 4th. So we're going into a really long weekend, which is wonderful. This is my monthly update. My name is Chris O'Neill from So The Distance and I'm happy you're here. Usually I do a monthly update around the first of every month. I did miss last month. So we are going to be covering May's projects and June's projects in this update. So let's get started. So first around the house, we've been super busy. We've been doing a lot of yard work a lot of painting inside. We painted all of our woodwork, like all the trim and stuff. It was all mismatched colors and woods and everything else. So we replaced a lot of it and ended up painting it all white just to make everything look cohesive and clean and bright. And I just love it. It turned out so wonderful, but it took a whole lot of time. We also were spending a lot of time with family this month. Also, friends of mine came to visit from Massachusetts and we went to the Pennsylvania New Grand Canyon, to Knoebels Grove, which if you're ever visiting Pennsylvania, you have to go to both of those things, but especially Knoebels Grove. It's one of the most underrated amusement parks, I think, in the United States, and it's a lot of fun. My friends also brought me a gift. It is a quilt in a box from the Vermont Flannel Company. It has over 900 squares in it. I can't wait to play with that. I haven't opened the box yet, though. I am planning to and just kind of playing with some of those fabrics. Let's get started on what I made this month. First of all, I made a Bible tote for my mom for Mother's Day. The fabric line is Songbook by Stephanie, Sw I think it's Slowinski of Moda. I love how this turned out. It was a great panel to use and I used some coordinating fabrics and it's just the right size for her to carry her Bible and a notebook to church or to Bible studies. I also made an I Spy coin quilt, which I'll put a link to that at the end of this video if you wanna see. I also worked on my scrappy blocks. I did a tutorial on this and I wanna show you here how they come together in the middle because I know that was a concern for some people. Those points don't line up, but when you have a quilt with this many pieces, your eye really doesn't see that. If this bothers you, this might not be the block for you, but for me, I just like how it all comes together and how easy it is to not worry about those points. I also have my scrap snap quilt quilted and I just finished binding it yesterday. Then after I bound it, I threw it in the wash. Let me get it. After it went through the wash and the dryer, it is so crinkly and soft and scrunched up and wonderful and I I just love it. I love I love quilts after they come out of the dryer and after they shrunk some. This is I think going to be a favorite for us and our family. I I love how it turned out. Along with all the makes that I made for myself, which actually there weren't that many, but along with the things I was making for myself and for the family, I also made some shop samples for our local quilt shop. I made this wonderful spool quilt top, which turned out really cool. I also made some pop-up baskets for a class, and this pattern is from the Fat Quarter Gypsy. I'll put links again below in for all of this stuff. And I made some pin cushions for the shop. That's from this book, which is a really great book, More Weekend Sewing. So I'm making a whole bunch of projects from this book for the shop and they're all turning out really great. So I highly recommend this book. I think there's what, 25 projects in this book and they are a lot of fun. And they even tell you how long it takes to make each project, which I really appreciate too. So speaking of the quilt shop, while I was there, I noticed that the owner of the quilt shop had this wonderful vintage needle holder. So I asked her if I could record her explaining it. Here's the video of that. So this is for your old treadle machines. And if you, you go over here and find the number, this will give you your shuttle and your bobbin. And then you go to the number. We're on number five and you open it up. And this is in there. Here's your bobbins. It's so cool. And it moves that thing as yep. you turn as you the turn style. It, it rolls around. And then here's your shuttle for those bobbins in that machine. That is so cool. Isn't that the coolest thing? I just, I couldn't believe it. I was, it's just so neat. It's something from the past that she has and she has it on display in her shop. She also has a few antique machines. So she does use some of the needles and the bobbins from this kit. I, I've never seen anything like it. It's so neat. And finally, an update on the Buick, the cutting table. I still haven't painted it, guys. I still haven't painted it. I know, I know, I know I need to. I still use it all the time. It's a wonderful cutting table. It's so big and gives me so much room, but I still haven't painted it. I will have it painted. Hopefully this month, I will have it painted and I'll be able to show it to you on August 1st. 
And also, can you believe it's July already? I can't believe it's July already. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this update. Again, not a whole lot of things that I made. Hopefully in this month, I'll have a lot more. I hope to be back to doing more projects here in July and possibly even starting some of those Christmas projects. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I'll see you soon. Bye.